when the Hollywood gods decided to make dog shit remakes for modern audiences, the people behind The Crow had these eyebrows tattooed for a long time and they were ready to f with us from the start. Hi all, Snarky J Cosplay here. As if life wasn't difficult enough, I woke up this morning in a good mood and it was immediately ruined by this article released by Vanity Fair, which included new teaser images of Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twigs in their roles of Eric and Shelley in the upcoming The Crow reboot. Recently, we got a release date for this absolute f***ing travesty, I mean new Crow film, and it is June 7th. So essentially, we're gonna be kicking off the summer blockbuster season with one of the biggest mistakes Lionsgate has ever made. Let's get into it. First and foremost, I want to go ahead and show you guys this image. This is the one that is currently making the rounds. It shows Bill Skarsgård having transformed into the crow. Now, I do want to remind you that this is a reboot not an exact remake, and yet, despite the fact that there have been other characters that ended up becoming The Crow, right? We had sequels which were other people. With this film, they decided to essentially rehash the character that Brandon Lee played, Eric Draven. So this guy is supposed to be this guy. They're the same person, right? They're both Eric Draven. They're just being retold in a different manner. I feel like I just saw this motherfucker tweaking on the Metro Mover in downtown Miami. How is this anything related to James O'Barr's original images of the crow. Yes, I read the original comics. If you take a look at this guy, he doesn't look anything like this. He also doesn't look anything like Brandon Lee's version. And yeah, okay, we want something new and fresh. But new and fresh apparently meant inspired by Lil Peep and Post Malone. That is a real quote in this Vanity Fair article because it was more important to the people behind this movie to make sure that 19 year olds today can see themselves in this guy for what reason I don't know. It was more important for them to make him look like a 2024 meth head than to actually produce anything that looked like quality. Allow me to gather my thoughts on this image for a moment. Homeboy looks like Jared Leto's Joker, which we all hated. Dude looks like he could seriously be the third and most forgotten incestuous island boy brother. He looks like Machine Gun Kelly's slightly more tweaked out cousin. Dude looks like Post Malone discovered Ozempic because it's 2024 and that is apparently what modern audiences wanted. See, that's my whole issue with this movie because then in the same article we also have a quote that of course what happened to Brandon Lee was a tragedy so his soul is apparently very much alive in this movie where is he alive in the tattoo around Bill Skarsgård's nipple I'm going to come right out and say it. if they had made another The Crow reboot and this guy had been named anything Pepe, Fulano, Mengano, anything else they could have literally called the guy anything and I would would not have cared that he looks like the meth head that tried to follow me to my car in downtown the other day. It wouldn't have bothered me. What bothers me is that this is Eric Draven, the character that Brandon Lee died playing. Eric Draven has been turned into this and they want to say that this movie is a tribute to Brandon Lee that they're keeping his memory alive then why are you doing this why are you telling me that it was so important for you to use your own influence to make sure 19 year olds today can see themselves in this guy and to completely bastardize his story why because obviously everybody behind this movie is a hack that has nothing better to do than to completely ruined movies that turned out to be cult classics. Eric Draven belongs wholeheartedly to Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee who gave his life in one final performance bringing that character to life. That character should be considered sacred and should never have been bastardized with fresh eyebrow tattoos and nipple tattoos to f up everything we knew and loved. Not to mention how the f did we go from a movie 
which had one of the greatest soundtracks of all time, characterized by music from The Cure, Nine Inch Nails, Stone Temple Pilots, The Violet Femmes, and now we're taking inspiration from Lil Peep. One of the things in this article that really stood out to me is the fact that they mentioned that they wanted a balance of light and dark in this film, and therefore we're gonna be witness to, unwillingly if you ask me, more of Eric and Shelley's relationship. In the 1994 film, Eric and Shelley have already essentially met their ends by the moment the movie starts, and we only ever see snippets of their relationship in sort of dreamlike sequences in Eric Draven's fevered mind. And that is in the brilliance of The Crow, because in the original comics, most of the images we get of Shelley are presented in that exact manner. The more you get to see of somebody's relationship, the more you can judge it and decide, you know what, maybe I would not want to come back from the dead to avenge her. And that's another part where this movie goes wrong. Apparently we need to wait to see this transformation into The Crow, we're gonna have to watch these two fall in love and admire each other's shit tattoos and equally crappy piercings. This is a take for modern audiences, so therefore it needed shitty tattoos, awful haircuts reminiscent of TikTokers that only get attention because they're f***ing crazy, and some of the cringiest trends that are obviously alive and well in this film because, hey, we need to involve, once again, modern audiences. The 1994 film, for all of its flaws, for all of its issues, it should stay Stand alone. This is 100% disgraceful. And when we look at the fact that when Jason Momoa was originally attached to this project and we got this, this test footage of Jason Momoa with the makeup, we can see that even that might have been a more genuine adaptation, a more genuine homage to Brandon Lee and everybody that worked on that original movie. That looks a million times better and more tasteful to the memory of Brandon than this f***ing SoundCloud rapper that we've gotten from Bill Skarsgård. I think the guy is a great actor, I admire him for his craft, but this is derivative bullshit and I 100% do not support this remake. I have been very open about my feelings about this remake from the start, but seeing these promo images, seeing what the f they've done with this character, I 100% have no faith in this anymore. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of you angrily typing little missiles in my comment section, Jay, how dare you, you haven't even seen it. I don't give a shit. This looks like crap. I've seen the original a million times. I've met and interacted with James Obar. I have read the comics. I wanna be sane about this, but I don't have it in me. This is something that I have loved for more than half my life at this point, so I feel just a little bit justified in being absolutely infuriated by this. We have yet to see a trailer for this film that premieres in June, and I think the fact that we're only now getting teaser images says a whole lot about what exactly Lionsgate thinks they have on their hands here. And I think it's a steaming pile of dog <laughs> And that's all from me. I've been Snarky J. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. For more Snarky J, be sure to check me out on Instagram. And if you would like to support me, my channel, and my content creation, please do check out and consider subscribing to my Patreon. I will add links to both of those in the description below. And let me know your thoughts about these teaser images for The Crow in the comments below.